or means to us then. So, logarithms. That's how you spell them, logarithms. Okay. So, there are some components. Components of a logarithm. We write log. We're going to use n for the base. A equals the exponent. Okay? So, when we're talking about logarithms, I'm going to use n for base because I sure don't want to use b because b to us means other things, right? So I'm just going to say some number base, right? It's a number. This is the base. This is what's called the argument, which is just what it's equal to. And the E, of course, is the exponent. There is a connection between logarithms and powers, right? When these two can switch, right? And I can switch to N to the E is equal to A, right? Where n is still the base, this is the exponent, and of course the answer or the argument, what it's equal to. Right? Connection between logarithms and how to write exponents powers, right? So the base is the base is the base is always the same, but I could be switching between logarithm form of a number and an exponential form of a number, going back and forth. So this is what I mean from by this. Take a look. Example, evaluate the following without a calculator. Because of course that's where we're going, right? Doing it without the calculator. So, a log base 7 of 49. So, we write it that way, but what we need to understand first is all logarithms are numbers, right? So, log, I think we say it like that, log base 7 of 49 is equal to a number. What is that number? 2 right? It's equal to 2 because 7 squared is 49. Base is base is the same. The logarithm is equal to the exponent and the argument is the answer. So how about this one? Log base 3 of 1. That is a number, and whenever you see it, you should be able to recognize, oh, log base 3 of 1 is actually, what number? Zero, right? Zero. Because 3 to the 0, anything to the 0 power, is 1. Right? So log base 2 of 8. So that represents a number. What is the number that log base 2 of 8 is? 3. Because in your head, what you're saying is, oh, because 2 cubed is 8. Right? So the logarithm is just a different form of writing the exponent on a power. Okay? Just a different way of writing it. So logarithms are just a different form of writing 
the exponent of a power. Okay, so if you understand that concept, right, these ones all work nice and pretty, right? What do we do when they're not so nice and pretty? Let's take a look here. Example, estimate the following. Estimate the following. Take a look here. A log base 2 of 14. Okay, so again, not one we can go, oh, I know what that is. But if you understand, it's still the concept. Let's switch this for a second. Switch it to exponential form. What you're saying is 2 to something is equal to 14. Right? That's what was going on in your head. Right? 2 to some some exponent was equal. These ones were even. So if you wanted to estimate, then get the numbers that are close to 14. You know 2 cubed is equal to 8. Right? And you know 2 to the 4th is equal to 16. Right? The logarithm is the exponent. So, take a look at your numbers. Where do you think this falls? Take a guess. What do you think it is? What do you think it is? So, let's try it. 3.8, I think, is good. 3.7, 3.8. Did you look in a calculator? No, without the calculator, right? 2 to the what equal to 14? Well, I'm much closer to 4 than 3, right? So when you're estimating, I don't know, 3.8, 3.7. So plug it in, see how close you were, right? Clear it. So again, base was 2, answer was 14, 3.8, right? You can estimate where that exponent is, and this is how you would show it, right? So you would say this is approximately equal to 3.8 because when I switch it to exponential in my mind, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm closer to, to the fourth power than the third. Does that make sense? Because again, all these logarithms are numbers, which means not just perfect, nice, pretty powers, but all the decimals in between as well. Right? So take a look at this one. Log base 3 of 50. And again, I want you to estimate it. So, without the calculator, right? Check it afterwards. But you should recognize that this is a number, right? Now, what kind of number is it? So again, you would switch to exponential form. 3 to the something is equal to 50, right? I'm saying that log three, log uh, base 3 of 50 is what I want that number equal to. So 3 cubed, you know, is 27. 3 to the 4th is 81. Where does 50 lie between these two things? And I'm like just shy of halfway. I mean, we're, we're estimating, right? Is it kind of just shy of halfway? So does it make it sense to you that, oh, maybe 3.4? 3, right? If it's just shy of halfway, then it has to be just shy of the exponents. And I'm just guessing. Let's see. So, and then see how close you are. Again, the thing you're recognizing that these are numbers. 3.6, I said 3.4. We're estimating, right? Whichever, okay? 
So you're getting an idea that that number is not 725, like it's between 3 and 4. Is this okay? So all logarithms are a number. Okay. So that was the first button. Now let's talk about the other button that you have, the common logarithm. Okay, and that's that other button, L-O-G, on your calculator, right? That one right there just says L-O-G on it, okay? <sighs> Logarithms with a base number, with a base number of 10 are called the common logarithm and we tend to drop the base when writing it. It is understood. that the base is 10. That's why that button just has log, that it doesn't have the base or anything, because it's understood, it's in the program, that the base is 10. So, for example, I would just write log 100. All logarithms are a number, right? I don't have a base here. It's understood that the base is 10. So what is log 100 equal to? 2. 2. Right? Because if you hit that button, you'll notice there's no blinking. Like if you hit the first one, that's when you had your bases. You had that blinking uh, subscript there, right? That's to put your base. On the common logarithm, no such thing happens because it's in the program that it's already base 10. 10 to the what gives you 100? Oh, 2. Okay, so whenever you see a logarithm that has no base, it's understood that the base is 10. Same with the log of 0 0.001. Base 10s, right? What do we know about base tens with our decimals? Right, if you know 10, sorry, 10 cubed is 1,000, you know that. 10 squared is 100. 10 to the first power is 10. 10 to the zero is one. What is 10 to the negative one? It's 1 tenth. Right? Which is, like you said, point 0.1. Right? Zero in front. So what is 10 to the negative 2? Point 0.01. Watch your decimals, right? Uh, how about 10 to the negative 3? Which, of course, is 1 over 1,000. But in decimal form, it is... Point zero, zero, 0.001. Negative 3, 3 places. Okay? So when you have, and then of course on and on we go with that, right? Negative 4, point zero, 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 0.0001. Is everybody good with that pattern on base tens? So when I have this then, what is it equal to? Negative 3, right? Because again, it is understood it's base 10, plug it in, and that's how you get your negatives. Right? Log base 10,000. We just count the zeros, right? Which is four. When it's, net, when it's the decimals, we count how many decimal places. When they're greater than 10, we count how many zeros. That's what it is, okay? 
So that's the common logarithm. There's a third button, and that is the natural logarithm. And on your calculators, it looks like that, LN. It's usually right there. Does everybody see it? That's an LN. That is the natural logarithm. And the natural logarithm, natural logarithm has a base of E. Right? Base E. Remember E was our natural growth number? Well, the natural logarithm has E as its base number, okay? And is also, and is also written without the base. Because it's understood that the base is E. Just like the common logarithm, it is understood that the base is 10, so we don't bother writing it. So, for example, here, right, if I had something like the natural log of, uh, oops, sorry, the natural log of 10, okay, so that is actually saying e to some exponent is equal to 10, right? We don't have a base, it's understood to be e. The logarithm, any logarithm is equal to a number, that number is the exponent, right? Remember e was 2.71, right? Remember your e's, e was 2.71. So e squared then was roughly 7.4. So E cubed then was 20.08. I'm not expecting you to know these. I just want to show you for right now. When, so when you estimate that before we plug it into your calculator, I want to know where 10 lies. So first of all, does it make sense that it's going to lie between 2 and 3? My answer is going to be between 2 and 3. 10 is a lot closer to 2 than 3. So I'm going to say maybe 2.1, 2.2. Right? So take a look. Hit your natural, and you just hit the 10, the answer. The E is programmed in 2.3. Okay? Same sort of thing there, right? So approximately, so the 2.3. But again, the point being, all of these are logarithms. All of them are talking about the exponent. They're all numbers, it's just three di the different types of bases and the three keys, okay? So what would be the natural log of one? Zero, right? Because it's read like this and kids get mixed up about this all the time, but remember, it's the natural log of e, right, of 1, which means e to some exponent is equal to 1. Well, the only thing, anything to the 0 power, is 1. So the natural log of 1 is equal to 0. Okay? The base is already there. Okay, so those are your three buttons, three different types of logarithms we are going to be using. So, express the following. In exponential form. So, A log base 2, 16 is equal to 4. Log 
1,000 is equal to 3. And C, oopsie, natural log of 26 is equal to 3.258. And then you should be able to go the other way. Express the following in logarithm form. Okay, how would you write those? How would you switch them? You guys should be able to do that now, right? Before we go on. So express the following in exponential form. The base is always right, right there. That is always the base. What the whole logarithm is equal to is always the exponent. Right? So the number that's left over is the answer or the argument what it is equal to. Just switching. Right? Recognizing logarithm to exponential form where all of the numbers go is basically what you're saying. This one, no base, then it's the common base, which is 10. Again, the entire logarithm is equal to the exponent, and what's left is the answer. Natural log, the base is E. The exponent is always by itself. What's left is the answer. Okay? And how to express in log form? Going the opposite way. The base, the base, the base, the base, the base never changes, right? The base in log and exponential form. So, write log. The subscript is always the base, right? I'm going to leave a space. The logarithm is always equal to the exponent, so process of information is the answer, right? Just where do you put them? Same here, log 27. The whole thing is always equal to the exponent, so two-thirds, right? The answer goes there. When I write the common, right, here we never write the base. So even though it's 10, we would just say log 1,000 is equal to the exponent, which is 3. And the natural log, same thing, we never write the base. E, it's always equal to the exponent. So, you know, process of elimination, the answer goes there. No, we don't typically do. They might, but it's just understood. If there's no base and it says log, it's base 10. If it, there's no base and it says ln, that's natural log, the base is E. All right. So let's build these up a little bit. So what you going to do here? Again, no calculator, right? So example, 
evaluate, meaning I can get a number, evaluate the following. And again, without calculator. So take a look at this. Log base 2 of root 8. So understand that that is a number, right? We need to figure out what that number is. Plug it into your calculator right now so you can just see that it is going to be a number. And then how do we do that without, right? Log base 2 root 8 is a number. In fact, it's three halves. It's not a, even a bad number. Okay? So how do we find that? So first thing you're going to do is remember this is equal to an exponent. This whole logarithm is equal to some exponent. So the first thing you're going to do is switch to exponential form. Okay, that's the first thing you're going to do. So that means 2 to the stupid exponent that I'm looking for, which is going to be my answer, is equal to root 8. Right? This number is what I'm looking for. But I also know this number is the exponent on that too. I also know that you can solve an exponential equation by getting the same base. So, first thing then, 2 to this thing I'm looking for, 8 I need to write as uh, expo exponent. So, the square root is always to the positive 1 half. Then I can get my bases the same, because 8 is 2 cubed to the one half. And then of course, drop the bases, three times one half. That's where you get your three halves. So you can say log base two root eight then is equal to three halves which is exactly what you got here on your calculator. It is equal to a number. So take a look at this one then. Log uh, base 9 of the fifth root of 81. I'm asking you, what is that thing, right? Like that thing is a number. What is it? All logarithms are numbers. So again, plug it in your calculator so you can see where this is coming from. So plug in your nine, uh, your fifth root button, put your five there, and your 81, right? And I'm going to get a number here. Turns out it's equal to two-fifths. Go figure. So your calculator tells you. Okay? It is a number. So how we solve it, of course, is I'm recognizing that this whole thing is equal to an exponent. Your calculator has told you that that exponent is two-fifths. Right? So we do the same thing all the time. Always when we have logarithms and we want to evaluate what they are, Switch it to exponential form always, right? So that is 9 
to some exponent is equal to the fifth root of 81. The 9 and the 81 should give you a little bit of a hint there, right? Now, remember, 9 exponent, 81, if I need to write something radical to exponent, the index is always on the bottom. So this is to the 1 fifth, right? Which, of course, 81 now is 9 squared to the one-fifth. So now I see that exponent I was looking for, right, is two times one-fifth, which is two-fifths. And that's the program that's going on in the, in the calculator when it's telling you log base nine of the fifth root of 81 is a number that's actually equal to two-fifths. Okay, mm a little maneuvering there. So how about you try a few? So you try this one. C, log base three of nine roots of three. Okay, how would you, like, so that thing, all that entire thing is actually a number. I'm going to tell you it's five halves. How can you find that five halves? Okay, when you're doing this, careful that we're not doing any crazy stuff like dividing, thing, dividing things out that have an exponent, right? You need to get these with the same base. So I'm saying 3 to something is equal to 3 squared times 3 to the 1 half. Bases are the same. Which tells me my exponent then is equal to... 2 plus 1 half. You add the exponents when you have your bases the same. So your exponent there is 4 over 2 plus 1 over 2. So you're, that's how you get your exponent of 5 halves. That when you plug this entire logarithm, you actually get that on your calculator. Okay? So, now that you... Oh, maybe I should do a fraction for you. Hmm. What are you going to do with a fraction? Are you going to be scared? Please say no. What is uh, log one-fourth... Or, sorry, one-eighth of one-half? Sorry, that's an eight. That looks messy. So, are we going to be scared with fractions? Say no, Miss Martin. We are not going to be scared of fractions. So the base is one eighth. I'm just going to separate these. The answer is one half. Okay. First thing you do always is you switch that to exponential form, right? That's the first thing that you're always going to do. So that is one eighth, right, of some exponent is equal to one half. You must switch it to exponential form always. Okay, so then recognize what one eighth is. Right? That's 1 over 2 cubed. Right? 1 half. You can leave it there or you can switch it to, because now your bases are the same. Right? Or if you want, you can switch it to 2 to the negative 3. Right? Times some exponent is equal to 2 to the negative 1. 
if you want to have. Either way will work, but sometimes I think as if you guys can get away from fractions, that's usually generally a good thing, right? So then bases are the same. So I have negative 3 times some exponent is equal to negative 1. So therefore, my exponent had to be 1 third. So what I'm saying is, if I plug this into my calculator, log base 1 eighth, of one half, which I'm about to do, it's supposed to tell me it's one third, right? That's what it's supposed to say. So take a look and does it, because we have fraction keys and everything, right? So your base, fraction key, one half, and there is your one third, okay? Logarithms are the exponent, Fractions, not scary, right? Please say yes. Okay, from here we're going to put x's in. Now we're going to solve a logarithm equation. So take a look here. How do we do this? Example. Solve for x. A. So log base 5 of x is equal to negative 3. And again, every single time you have logarithms and you're going to solve, your first step is always switch it to exponential form. Right? Switch it to exponential form. Always. Switch to exponential form to solve. Because as soon as you do that, take a look. Well, this is 5. The logarithm is equal to the exponent. Hmm, I already isolated x just by switching it to i, right? 5 to the negative 3, remember, that is 1 over 5 to the positive 3, which is 1 over 125 is equal to your x. Because again, remember, negative exponent is how you write fractions, not negative numbers. Okay. Log of x, log base x of 36 is equal to 2. And I am letting you know that our bases, our bases will always be positive numbers. There are no such thing as a negative base number, just like an exponent, so it was never a neg, right? This x for us is always going to be a positive number. Bases are always positive. So I'm just making that note so you remember this. Bases are always positive numbers. So when you switch this, right, to exponential, you have x squared is equal to 36, right? Take the square root of both sides. We only have to take the positive one. Because you know when you take the square root of 36, a negative 6 is an answer too, right? But we're only taking the positive ones. So what about this? Natural log of x plus 3 is equal to 3. Okay, 
So again, switching to exponential, and if it's not stated, it's the natural log, you know its base is e. It's always equal to the exponent, x plus 3. Solving for x, so isolate it. And we would just leave it like that. That's its exact value, right? To go any further, you need a calculator. So you would just leave it like that. It's just the switching of it around. That's all you're looking at, practicing that. Is everybody okay there? But we still switch it to exponential, right? Is that what you mean? Remember, there's an e, the base is e. That's always the exponent. And what's left is the answer. And then, yeah, like, we don't know what that is. Like, but at that point, it's just plugging it into a calculator, so we don't really care. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, here are some helpful, helpful log shortcuts. Logarithm shortcuts. Okay. Here's the first one. Things that we just know, right? that when we see them, log base n of one. As Soon as you see that n being the base, and it actually doesn't matter what the base is, right? Whenever you see this, what is that always equal to? Zero. Zero, right? That's a huge one, because n to the zero is always equal to one, no matter what the base is. So when you see something like that, right? then you always know that's equal to zero. How about this one? Log of some base number n, right? n being any number to the n. What is this one? Always equal to no matter what the number is. Well, if you switch it to exponential, n to the what is equal to n? Because remember, that is equal to the exponent. n is the base, some exponent equal to n. What does this always have to be equal to? 1. Right? So that's another one. When you see a logarithm of base n of n, like that, right away, don't even think hard, well, that's 1. That number represents one, right? So what I'm saying is if you see something like this, log base three of three, oh, one. Log base 12 of 12, one. Log base one half of one half, one. Just always one. Things that will come in handy when you're trying to evaluate these things. Here's another one. Log base n of n to the x power. So again, remember, so take a look. Remember, this whole thing is equal to some exponent, right? When you switch it to exponential, look, n to that some exponent is equal to n to the x. What is it always equal to? Bases are always the same that whole thing is going to be equal to whatever that exponent is, that x is. So for example, what I mean here is take a look. So we know now that it's always going to be equal. I just will move that out of there. It's always just going to be equal to whatever the x is right there. This whole thing will be equal to the x. So what I mean for examples, when you can see regular numbers, 3 base 3 of 3 squared. 
3 to the what gives you 3 squared? Right? When you switch it, look. So it's 3 exponent equal to 3 squared. So this whole thing, right, is always going to be what that is. Because it kind of cancel, right? When you switch it to exponential. So when you have log one fourth to the one fourth to the fifth power. Right? So I'm saying when the base and the answer ha are the same, then this whole thing is always just equal to that exponent. That's what I'm saying. Again, another thing that can come in very handy. And the last one is what if I had some number raised to a logarithm as its exponent, but with the same basis? What is that equal to? So now I'm at in exponential, right? Raise, this is my exponent all up here, right? What is this equal to when you see it? Because it looks really confusing at first. Okay, so when I go to switch this to exponent, like it's in exponential, although this is logarithm, that's the exponent. If you go the other way and switch it to logarithms, right, right? If I wanted to write this as a logarithm, don't get confused with this, this is just the exponent. The base, the base, the base is always the same. When I switch to logarithms, remember the base stays the same. The whole thing is equal to the logarithm. I'm, I'm sorry, the whole thing is equal to the exponent. Well, this is the exponent. So do we see that the answer has to be just x? Because that's what's left. So when it's an exponential form, but raised to a logarithm of the same base, then it's just the argument piece. Little things that uh, will help you as you go through. Um, the other and the last thing I just want to do is two things, two important um, details about all base numbers of logarithms. Right, the base number, so your n. The first is n must be positive, right? All bases are positive numbers. But the other thing is n cannot be equal to 1. Your base number can never be 1 because your logarithms, so let me say this again, your logarithms are just another way to write your exponent. But if your base is one, right? One to the third power is still one. One to the seventh power is still one. One to any law, right? So it's always just one. So your base is never one because it just, it doesn't make any sense. The number is always one. So, and the other one is that it has to be positive. Okie dokie. Uh, are you okay with this? All right. So I want you to play around with some of this to get comfortable with it. So page 380, numbers 2 to 5 and 12 to 14. And I have a worksheet for you as well that I need to go for.